All right, welcome to your VR devlog number nine. My name is Ryan, and it's been two weeks since the last devlog, so I've got a lot of ground to cover here. We'll start with our main village. We have removed all buildings that uh, don't serve any purpose. There was a barn over there, uh, as well as every other building uh, as we've turned everything into a player buildable building. When you start, uh, none of these signs will be here. It's uh, a progression that we want uh, players to go through. So you have to build the, the smelter before you have access to build the blacksmith. Um, well, obviously it, the blacksmith requires ingots, which can only be made at the smelter. And then once that's done, then all of this stuff opens up. So when you start, the signs and the boxes won't even be here. We just want to kind of give that impression of a long forgotten village and then you're building it up. And speaking of that, we've given Skelly a little bit more of a storyline. So he is the last, uh, the last kind of person to die in this old village 200 years ago. And you're here to help him go find his his, his piece, very, very original and creative, I know. Um, as you can see, we've got subtitles. So for hearing impaired, as well as people that don't speak English, um, my language settings are set to English, but we have German, Japanese, and French translations. I think the uh, German ones are in, and they should be in the next build. Uh, and then we'll be getting the Japanese and the French in as well. So one of the most requested features of the game that we've been getting so far is a way to help people alleviate their back pain of having to pick up uh, resources. And this kind of came about by accident. What I wanted was a, a kind of an, an intermediate step between having to use your cart if you want to just go out and gather, you know, five coal and five iron ore. So what, what my, my intention was, was creating a basket where you can just kind of put things in like this, and then you can kind of just turn it upside down and, and drop, the, drop the, the loot that you've gathered. However, again, accidentally, we forgot to put proper collision on the basket, which means that you can just push it into things like this, and all of a sudden, it just picks stuff up. And it turned out to be the most convenient way to gather resources. As you can see, I've put down a bunch of wood here. I think we, we need seven wood to, to repair Skelly's cart. So uh, it makes a, a nice demonstration of if I want to just grab my seven pieces, I put this in there, it picks up seven, and then I just go to the, the box, turn it upside down. Now that's a work of cart. Uh, and then he'll do his little thing. I'm going to get away Before so he doesn't. So he doesn't uh, drown me out. So yeah, so we have a couple ways. We've been playing around a little bit with the kind of the turning it upside down, and that's been intermediately, intermittently working. So we've got a little button on the bottom, which is kind of hard to see, that you can just push and it'll dump it. Now it'll drop the basket too, but uh, that's something that we can fix. So that's, that's a big feature that's been in, uh, a lot more problematic than we thought it would be, but it holds seven of any kind of resources. So you can see I've got my, my seven wood here, and now I can walk over here and I can gather my, my seven stone, and I can gather my seven ingots and everything else. And then again, I can just turn them upside down and out they go. So that's a big deal. Uh, what else do we have? We've got our, I'll grab a hatchet here. We've got deer AI, if you hadn't noticed. Decided to come and walk through my scene. Uh, we've, we've added hooks onto the cart, so you can just drop tools on and pick them up like so. So that means that you can carry your pickaxe around and you can carry your hatchet. And I think we can even put the basket on one of these hooks, uh -huh, like so. So that's super cool, making your life a little bit easier. And let me grab the basket here and do this. And dump you in here. So another big request slash complaint that we've been getting is just the way that things have been flying out of the cart. And it's been happening for a couple of reasons. Um, but the way that we've solved that is that as soon as you drop something into the cart, and it's stopped moving. So you can see I can pick this up and it'll kind of bounce a little bit. But as soon as it stops moving, all physics turns off and it welds itself to the next object. So this piece of wood is welding itself to this piece of wood, which is welding itself to this piece of wood, which is welding itself to the cart. And it'll, it'll just, you can turn the cart upside down, you can throw it in the river, everything will stay put. So no more uh, resources falling out of the cart, which is cool. And let's see if I can find our little handle. There you are, stuck under the ground. 
Um, so you can see when I when I do this, um, no matter how how I move, let's see if I can probably get it stuck on a tree. And let's go over here. So I'll get you stuck on this tree on purpose and not recommended. And it slowly kind of tries to work its way around. And if anybody remembered from the early version of the game, that would cause the cart to essentially explode. Stuff would fly out all over the place, but now everything is 100% staying put. Uh, the other thing that has been modified is the cart will now affect your walk speed. So that was causing a lot of physics issues with earlier versions but now you can only walk as fast as the cart and eventually we'll have it in play where however much stuff you have in the cart will also affect how fast you can go. This cart is uh, at the kind of the end, the end game. This cart is meant to just carry very large objects or large quantities of objects. Uh, for the most part, I think a lot of players will find their basket to be pretty useful and will maybe even allow players to upgrade their basket later so it can hold more than seven of each type of resource. Um, emptying the cart is super easy. You just put it in there, grab it, and then go take it to wherever you want, like here. And I think this takes 25, so I'm just going to build the player house, because like I was saying, everything everything needs to be built at this point, even the, the player house. Uh, so I'll probably do that and get, get myself a house. But again, just demonstrating how easy it is to pick up resources now. I got some sound effects when the buildings build. And uh, now we have uh, our house. And we've got our weapon hooks. And uh, you can, uh, as you can see, Skelly is telling us that we can go around the back. And the house itself even has uh, various levels that can be upgraded. So let me, let me turn you down. Um, and uh, and yeah, so that's uh, cart, basket, resource gathering, pretty important stuff. Uh, the blacksmith now has tiers, so you can build the level one, the level two, the level three, and it gives you, instead of just requiring a ton of resources to build the blacksmith and everything inside of it, uh, now you have to kind of build it up bit by bit, just like with the house there. Uh, let's see our... Uh, because it's been so long, I'm trying to remember what I covered in the last video. Uh, let's make sure we're on Ultra here. Uh, so, something that was just added recently, uh, we've, in the advanced menu, you can now disable anti-aliasing if you want. Unreal uses temporal AA, which does cause a little bit of blurriness, uh, probably more than people might be used to with uh, Unity games. So. You can just go down to anti-aliasing and hit the, the trigger, and you can see it turns it completely off. And then we can go up from one to three to four, and this is uh, this is where it kind of defaults to. So this is uh, the level that I think some people have found a little bit too blurry, particularly for text when you're far away. Let's see how far away I can be before I can read. It's, it's a little bit blurry, and then if I turn it down, it definitely becomes a lot clearer, but you get that jaggy edges on things and it kind of feels like the entire world is moving a little bit as the uh, the edges are overlapping one another. But the option is there, so if you prefer it like this, then you can go nuts and make it nice and crisp. I prefer it somewhere, somewhere around two or three, I think work well. Uh, what else do we have going on? In the menu system, we've got a lot of our movement, uh, our movement, options in play, uh, particularly with the D-pad controller. So as with before, if I hit the uh, right side of the touchpad, it'll turn my left hand into a D-pad. So you can see that at wherever I point my hand, that's where I'm going to be moving. And if we open up our menu and go in here, we can change the D-pad mode to hover. So this is kind of cool. I, can, I think I can press anywhere, maybe not, let's see. Might be right in the middle. Let's see. Oh, actually, I have to turn it on, don't I? Um, so, oh, there we go. Ah, okay. So this is this mode is more of the tactile, the tactile mode. I think this is probably what you'd be used to with um, onward. So I'm not required to actually push the button down. All I'm doing is I'm just touching and hovering over uh, where I want uh, to go. So. Uh, forward, backwards, and again, I'm pointing the direction that I want to go. 
and in what else do we have joystick mode this is something similar to what you'd have in hover junkers we're prototyping this because we'll probably have our uh our horse riding uh movement system to be governed by this so instead of pointing pointing uh or pushing in a direction that i want to go what i'm doing is i'm pushing in the middle of uh, I'm pushing in the middle of the, uh, the, the, the touchpad, and then I'm going to move the controller in the direction that I want to go. Um, so anybody that's played Hover Junkers will be familiar to this. And like I said, it, it's going to work probably a lot better with horseback riding, um, but right now it's just, uh, it's just in there if you wanted to, if you wanted to play with it. Um, anything else in the menu that we have? We have our walk speed, our FOV reduction. Uh, since the last patch, the the lowest level of FOV, FOV reduction will just turn it off completely, so you won't get any more of the darkening around the edges, and uh, that just goes back to the way it was before. So yeah, so standard standard D-pad, touch sensitive D-pad, and then joystick mode, and then we do have um, let's see, we do have. Um, uh, options to make it so that forward is either where you're pointing or it is where you're looking. So you can see wherever I look, that's where forward is. And this, I think this is a lot easier to stomach for people that are new to uh, VR. So let's head over here and take a look at the weapon stall, which I unlocked. And I can show off another very cool feature, um, which is the utility belt. So as I take any item, weapon, uh, or tool, move it close to my waist here, you'll see the little blue bubble appear, and I can just drop that in place and it hooks it on. We've had this uh, in the beginning, oh, we've had this in the beginning for quivers, and it's something where uh, we just wanted uh, someone to have really quick access to their arrows or their bolts in this case, so they can just reload, put it in, and have it uh, right there. Now. In the beginning, we had it so that you would have it on your back, or we'd try to find the perfect spot, and then one of our very smart devs just said, why don't we just let players put it wherever the heck they want to put it? So that is, uh, that's what we ended up with, and uh, then we extended that system to the weapons itself, as well as the hatchet, the pickaxe, and any other tools you find in the world. Um, including, I think, yeah, we've got an arbalest crossbow lever as well. So yeah, we can see we've got uh, of our AI, our deer are doing their thing. They're walking around. We have deer spawners in place. So as soon as you start uh, weaning out the population, they'll start respawning up to a maximum point. Uh, like I said, we've covered the subtitles, uh, building the, the village from scratch. Uh, we've got music. I don't know if you had music in the last, uh, the last video. Uh, more sound effects. And uh, a lot of refinement has gone into smelting and blacksmithing to improve that overall experience. So, so yeah, uh, more updates to come uh, within the next uh, short little while. We should have hunting totally ready to go. We can see that we have our meat cooker here. So this is set up in preparation of when we knock those guys out and take their resources and cook it over a grill, which of course is the first step towards uh, hunger and health and stamina and all of the other player stat system systems that are going to be in here. So hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, leave it in the comment section below and we will see you soon.